Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for gathering to celebrate Holy Mass today. And I wish to give a special welcome to anyone who might be visiting the cathedral, as well as to those who are joining us by live stream. Welcome. What would you think if one of your friends came up to you and said, the other day God told me that I should kill one of my children. Wouldn't you be really disturbed by that? And doesn't that point to the difficulty of grappling with our first reading today? God tells Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Well, what, what does that mean? What's that doing in the Bible? There are so many layers of meaning to this passage. Let us take a moment to start diving into them a little bit. The Old Testament makes the most sense when we see it in the light of the New Testament. Because after all, all of these centuries leading up to Christ were really meant to prepare for him. And this passage that we heard today about Abraham and Isaac takes on a whole new meaning when we look at it in light of Jesus Christ. Because when we look at it in the light of Christ, we see what St. Paul talks about in our second reading today. We see the love of God the Father who did not spare his own son for our sake. And just like Isaac carried on his back the wood for the sacrifice. So our Lord Jesus carried the wood of the cross. Just as we hear in our first reading when Isaac asked, well, where's the ram for the sacrifice? Abraham says, God will supply the ram. And he does. He gives us his own son to die for our sakes. And so in light of Jesus Christ, this, th this seemingly difficult passage takes on a whole and deep meaning as it points to the love of God the Father who did not spare his own son for our sake. But there are many, many other areas of meaning of this passage of well, as well. And, and, and let us take a look at three of them as they might apply to our own spiritual life today. How do we respond when things happen in our life where the will of God just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to us? How do we respond? Do we put our trust in God even though it might not make a whole lot of sense to us? Imagine Abraham as he gets this command from, from God and, and gosh, that must not make sense to him at all. But when we come to the end of the story, we hear that, well, God, really didn't want Abraham to kill his son at all. And in light of the end of the story, then things might make a little bit more sense. 
all kinds of things happen in our life that, that, that seem very troubling or, or very puzzling to us. But we're not yet at the end of our life, at the end of our story, where we may be able to look back at all these things and, and somehow see how God was working in our life. So when things happen that, that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense to us, are we able to put our trust in the Lord, knowing that we don't know what the end of the story is and we don't know how it all fits together? And a good example of this is the events of the last year. It's been a difficult year. Yet have we been able to take this as a great opportunity to grow in trust in the Lord, even though we might know, not know yet how all of the pieces fit together at the end of the story. Second application to our own life. In the life of Abraham, you know, God promised him that, that he would be the father of a great nation, that, that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky, but at the time he was childless, and then finally Isaac comes along, and he's his only son. So it must seem to God that this is how God is going to fulfill his promise. But how many times when you know, we're at prayer, we, we really expect God to answer our prayers in the way that we want. He will answer our prayers in the way that is best. And so maybe he, he was really expecting God to answer his promise to, to be this father of a great nation in, in ways that, that Abraham was clinging to and not letting God answer Abraham's prayers in the way that God wanted to. And so the whole sacrifice of Abraham was really to sacrifice all of the expectations that we might have when we go to the Lord and pray for something instead of abandoning ourselves to the Lord, knowing that he will answer our prayers in whatever way is best. And so when we come before the Lord and it seems that he's not hearing our prayers, can we sacrifice the way that we expect him to answer the prayers? and abandon ourselves in hope and trust in him, knowing that he will answer them at the time that is best and in the way that is best. A third application for our own spiritual life and relationship with the Lord. Do we really love the Lord our God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole strength? Or is something else in our life more important than God? God goes to Abraham and asks him to sacrifice Isaac, the one whom he loves. Is there something in our life that we love more than God that we have to sacrifice so that we love God above all things? And a good question for us to ask is, is there anything in my life that I would have a difficult time giving up? 
when I have a difficult time giving up any of my leisure activities, when I have a difficult time giving up anything that I own, when I have a difficult time giving up my job, and we could go on and on and on with the list, if a time came where we had to give up something, could we give it up if we need to? Does the love of God hold the central place in our hearts? Or is there something in our life that we love more than God that we have to sacrifice? In this time of Lent, when we give up something voluntarily, is not meant to be a mere empty practice. But to really strengthen our hearts and help us realize that the love of God is most important in our life. And so can we give up something that we like just for the love of God? And when we look at all of these things, and we could probably go deeper and deeper and deeper into the field of meanings and applications for our own spiritual life. This passage that seems very puzzling and difficult for us has really great purpose and great meaning. It speaks to us of the love of God the Father who did not spare his own son for our sake. But Jesus offered himself on the cross for our sins. And the passage speaks to us of a great invitation that no matter what happens in life, we are invited to fall into the arms of our loving Father and put our hope and our trust in Him and love Him above all things. <laughs>